Good evening, and welcome to the October 26th meeting of the Scarborough Planning Board. Will we all please uh, uh, rise for the pledge to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, you want to read the roll call, please? Ms. Alglis? Here. Mr. Bealey? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Fellows? Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. DuPont? Here. And Mr. Wood? Okay. Minutes of the October 5th. Do I hear any comments? Uh, motion, motion to, to approve. approve. Any comments? All in favor? Oh, I get to vote, yes. You got a comment? No, I just remember that I was supposed to vote. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I will. Okay. Who's uh, the on last week's minutes? On the second. Oh, John, oh, John. Did. Okay. okay. Item number eight, Brown Hill Realty, LLC, uh, which requested a uh, subdivision on Brown Hill Lane <laughs> has been tabled at the request of the applicant. So if anybody is here for that particular issue, then I uh, will save you the time and energy. <laughs> so it has been tabled. All right, proceeding. Item number four, Martins Point Healthcare Request Sketch Plan Review for 153 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map, U47, Lot 92. Jay, so you want to sort of Sure. As, the, uh, as you just read, this, the applicant is before the board for redevelopment of property at 153 U.S. Route 1. This is the site where the uh, Scarborough Commons was formerly located, which probably about a year or a year and a half ago burnt down has recently been completely demolished. Um, the property is located within the TVC district, and as just noted, the applicant is before you for a sketch plan review. This provides an opportunity for the applicant to ask questions about uh, expectations of the board and for the board to provide guidance on any elements of the plan that um, they see fit. With that, staff has provided um, some comments for the board and applicant to consider in terms of design standards and streetscaping, as well as parking, uh, uh, field design and layout. So with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. Thank you. I will open it up to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Planning Board. My name is Kylie Mason. I'm from Sebago Technics. I'm here representing Martins Point. Uh, this evening I have Jake Jacobson from Martins Point here if you'd like to ask any questions of the applicant themselves. Um, but I'd like to just give you a brief overview and I'm gonna grab the mic and hope all my paper doesn't fall. Let's see. Let's see here. So, is this on? it's on the bottom. No, try, try the other one. Maybe if you just turn the yeah. other mic. Is it? Is that right? I'll just turn this way and try and lean into it. Um, so just to orient everyone, um, this is Route 1 here. Lois's Naturals is in this location. Uh, this is uh, Prime Mercedes, and as the aerial won't show, they recently had the expansion uh, for the new auto lot there. Um, and so what we're proposing is to essentially, uh, the original building uh, sat in this location, fronting the street, parking in front of it, um, with what was essentially kind of a dead-end parking lot on this side and a dead-end parking lot over here, uh, good circulation around the building on this side. And what we'd like to do is, uh, because Martins Point has a drop-off component to their healthcare facility, uh, we do have a canopy, and it's very important that we provide this access for uh, patients coming in. So what we're proposing is coming off the signalized entrance, um, allowing for either circulation into the parking lot itself or to come through a one-way 
area. Uh, it's about 24 feet wide. I think it might be down to 22 feet wide. Um, it meets uh, the the needs for the fire lane. We also extend that to the back for access. But what that does is it allows people to drop off uh, a loved one at the canopy, escort them into the building, and then come around and park and, and, and then come in themselves. So this orientation is very important. It allows key circulation into the facility. Um, the other reason we would like to um, be in front of you and just ask for an impression or what your feelings might be as the original um, building and facility had parking within what is now a, a buffer area um, we are right up against the threshold for parking for what we think we might need at this facility especially with a community room aspect um, right now the, the medical office building itself is about 15,000 square feet there is a 3,000 square foot room uh, community room that's part of this um, to support that that community room aspect we do want to try and focus on as much parking as we can and so we'd like to take advantage of some of the parking spaces at the front and and keep those intact um, we would obviously eliminate anything that was the dead-end parking lot but this still allows for really good circulation and we could do some really great buffering. Uh, the other piece is uh, in working with engineering and planning, they've identified that there might be potential for a future bus stop. So what we've done is we've located it in this area. Uh, we'll certainly work through it um, <coughs> through the course of the, the next iteration and, and get that where uh, planning and engineering and the bus service uh, would be looking for that. But we think it's a great addition to the project uh, and Martin's Point's very excited to have it on the site. Um, a couple of things in terms of landscaping sketch plans don't real, really allow for landscaping and buffering plans so you'll forgive me for just the few smattering of trees but what I did bring uh, was a plant presentation to just give you an idea of the plants that we're planting within the certain buffer areas I'll hand those out uh, in just a moment but I also wanted to just uh, open this up to the planning board get your comments your thoughts um, what you think might make it better uh, what your concerns are You all set? I am. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, since this is a sketch plan, this, this, this is not open to the public, but it's really a, a matter of, of conversation with the applicant between the board and, and the applicant. And since you just mentioned landscaping. Thank you. So I'll start with you. <laughs> guess, I to be known, if only <coughs> for being the landscape lady. Okay. I would, would you please tell me what is the actual purpose of this building? What's the usage of this building? What, what's it going to use, be used for? It's a medical office building. No, I'm sorry, up here. I think it's a primary health care building. So you it's will have physicians there and patients will be coming in. There was some talk at the beginning that this might be part of the administration of Martin's Point but it's because that's what you were looking for over in South Portland but that's not what this is this is going to be a meeting with patients uh, definitely a excuse me for the record would you give us a name please Jake Jepson Martin's Point it's a uh, basically a primary health care facility with patients and and doctors providers uh, can I walk support in? staff um, no not at no. this not at this point okay so you need to be a patient or a client of Martin's Point to come in here. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. In terms of the, f the in terms of the uh, buffer, not the buffering, but the um, um, sure, the, f the use of the site, the transit in and out of the site. Um, I'm not against the way you set this up, but I'm not sure it's the only way to set it up. And in terms of how it could face onto Route 1 as opposed to facing sideways. sideways. Um, I think maybe at some point when you come back, it might be kind of good to do a sketch that just shows us the difference in what you end up with in terms of parking. Um, and of course, when you come back, there's going to be lots of talk about um, landscaping and all of that kind of neat stuff. Yes, for the bus stop, that's so very exciting. Um, great buffering, well, I'm really looking forward to seeing what that means. In the meantime, I'm very excited about the fact that you're here. It's nice to have. It's, I've always said when you get one or two, you're going to get six or seven. So we seem to be on our way towards doing something about providing medical offices on Route 1. And that's good. And we're glad you're here. 
Thank you. We're very excited for this project. What's thank that? you. Yes, thank you. Hi, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess I would agree with Sue to see the alternative, although I do like this arrangement. I think it looks nice. You know, it's, it's a little different, and um, so I don't really have a big problem with this, but it would be interesting to understand what your rationale, rationale other than being able to drive through there, you know? I mean, I assume that you'd want to do that on Route 1 as well, and it's probably more confining, so that's... That's what I suspect your problem is. The, the volume of the yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I don't really have a big problem with the um, you know the 15 foot where you want to keep the parking right there because it's right there now. So it's it's not like you're taking something away. Um, so I guess overall I'm very pleased with um, with with the presentation so far. Thanks. Nick? <clears throat> I really don't have uh, much for comments other than I think it's, you know, welcome and I think it's a good design so far. <clears throat> Echo my, my fellow planning board members here and <clears throat> wanted to know the rationale and you're saying it's the, it's the size of the building that couldn't allow you to orient it? Yeah. It'll, it'll be really easy <clears throat> for me to bring a sketch because it was one of the ones we explored early on. Um, when we look at the building volume, so if the original building footprint was 24,000 square foot, or 22,000 square foot, uh, 24,000 total, this building is 18,000 square foot, and as you can tell, it's much different than what was there. So this volume is generally the same as what was there. It was just a little more rectangular. It had no um, central core. And so when you take this and spin it, you can see that what, what ends up happening is you lose this. In fact, you lose this whole volume right here. And so what happens is um, you are almost forced to have a drop off within the main travel lane. And so there was a stacking and drop off, just malfunction. It, it would be um, undesirable it probably wouldn't be used for drop-off and it would seem awkward entering the site and then of course you end up with a dead-end parking lot at the back there so the idea of this is that you know using this area you can really um, gain good flexibility and circulation um, but turning this um, would certainly I think they ended up with 70 spaces when we were all said and done so a huge drop in volume of, of parking but also you lose that circulation. So and just as a follow-up, did you consider having the building on the on the other side, the other we side did. of it <laughs> facing the other way? And we I did. I say that because that means the rear of your building would be facing more of a wooded area rather than a, right. a drive, you know, a people yeah, driving past. We have, we have explored, and in that scenario, what happens is when you mirror it this way, you have to bring everyone in all the way around to loop them back, and the same thing happens. You end up losing a great volume of parking to support that movement. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Overall, uh, apparently it's going to be an improvement to the site. A couple of questions. Uh, immediately on Route 1 on the side of the building, you're removing those parking spaces. That's in green. There's no parking there? Yes. Okay. So you're asking for the waiver, which would be south of that? Uh, correct. It's this, this area right here. All right. Can we move those? Is it possible? Let me just reconfigure it a little bit to move those parking spaces to the rear of those six, to the rear left-hand side of that. that this area right space. here. Um, so we're actually exploring trying to get parking in there right now. If we can, it just gets us closer to what's more ideal for the site. Mm -hmm. They probably still wouldn't want to lose these unless you guys extra, so you know, absolutely don't want that them. That little green space we're showing there, how big is that? It's not big enough. On a green space on Route 1, sorry. This area right here? Correct. Uh, so it's about... It's about seven spaces wide at nine, so about 50 fi 56 feet long. So the green space, excuse me, the green... Oh, the depth the, of the area? The depth for the space it's from Route 1 to the parking. Probably about seven feet. Okay, so we're, we're just splitting it in half. Right. All right. Uh, and just the other part of the design standards, the north side of that building uh, needs to be, in my opinion, needs to be spruced up a little bit. Uh, that building itself? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think you'll see as a... elevation, yeah. pretty bland. Uh, 
you know, if you can yeah. somehow spruce that up a little bit. Yeah, uh, I think as you'll see the, the next iteration of building, this is just a SketchUp model. Right, so absolutely. You'll see some great stuff. And that's all I've got really got, just to uh, <clears throat> thank you. that design standard a little better, and I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Okay, let me just, uh, I know you've had conversations with staff, but let me just try and uh, <coughs> summarize some of the points that need to be stressed when you come before us again. Uh, more formal, of course, as far as uh, the architecture is concerned, as far as form, detailing, roof lines, so forth and so on. And as John just said, uh, the, the, the design standards uh, call for the detailing of the rear of the facade uh, to be similar or complement the design of the primary facade. And uh, so please keep that in mind. Um, you've discussed the orientation of the building. Um, you, in a general way, talked about parking needs, but how does it work with the, the uh, town's parking requirements? I mean, how many spaces I know you, you don't know how many patients you're going to have at any given time, but as far as what your best guesstimate is, uh, as far as staffing is concerned and, and versus patients, how many spaces do you think you're going to need and how does that meet the town's design? So we're actually exploring, uh, there's two other buildings just like this, one in Gorham, one in Biddeford. So uh, industry standard has you normally around six per thousand square feet and that puts us somewhere around 90 spaces um, We use that same ratio at the other facilities and we're currently tracking those parking needs to see what um, What we can spare on the site because certainly we don't want to build parking if we don't need to um, The other part that's the unknown here is the community room. So that's really where we're focusing on um, kind of an an overlap of parking it's very easy to track patients and turnover rate uh, as they see doctors the part that's going to be hard to track is that community room use aspect for when there'll be patients in the building but also uh, community in the community room so that would be um, and, and actually to go back to Susan's question earlier uh, through mr. chair the 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 question was uh, what's the use of the building and the one thing we left out was that there is a programmatic use for a community space and that leaves this 3,000 square foot area open to anyone to use within the community so there is that piece that we're trying to track so we're right around 90 is where we think we probably should be um, this site right now is as it's in front of you has 83 spaces okay and it, of course, uh, we'll need more specifics as far as landscaping and of course Absolutely. buffering, especially in the neighboring uh, neighborhood. Um, the bus stop, I know you're going to work with staff as far as location is concerned and also as far as the whole lighting situation, fixtures and timing and so forth. Um, and of course, the infamous stormwater infrastructure. Uh, we'll need to see some specifics about that. Sure. So, uh, having said all that, I'm thrilled to see <laughs> that fire uh, material taken away uh, and uh, look forward. I know that uh, uh, reputation is excellent and uh, past structures that you've built have been well received in the communities in, in, in which they exist. So we look forward to the next step in this and welcome to Scott. Nick, you got a question? You, know, you sure. finished your thought, but I did have one more thing to... Go ahead. As we were talking. So you have seven-foot buffer on the front of Route 1 there? Uh, on uh, that yeah, side. roughly. So if if you took another seven feet, put it that way, it gets you closer to the 15-foot buffer, which means, in fact, that middle stretch in the, the first one near the canopy, you would essentially lose one set of parking spots. Is that correct? To get the seven feet. If you just jammed, crammed everything down seven feet, pushed it, you would actually lose in those two center. I would lose a little bit more than point. that. Yeah, if I if I pulled all of Excuse this me. seven feet in. So what I'm talking about is if you if you wanted to move that seven feet this way, you would lose these two spots and that spot, right? Because everything would get pushed. And what I'm saying is, could you yeah. add the three there? No. Just so just right. So if I because it's actually I'm glad you asked because it's one of the scenarios we looked at. So what's driving this here is uh, this signalized entrance is really kind of the that's the fulcrum point, right? That's the point we can't move. It's everything we have to operate around. 
So uh, what's actually driving a lot of this is that turning radius to get people in and make and allow them to make a, a graceful turn without having to take a hard turn. So um, what's key here is this, this radius point, really. It's kind of setting everything. So if I pull this up too much, you're kind of mid-turn before you need to straighten out again if you're going right into the parking lot. Mm. Um, so that was, that was what drove this. Um, so if I come up and this turns in, um, everything, so I, I see right, it is, makes it makes more than what the seven mm -hmm. feet is. Right, yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay, I was just so you know, it's a great point because okay. that's one of the things we explored. So thank you. Uh, one last thing it is is mm -hmm. the is it okay with the fire department the, the configuration? Have you gone to them yes. yet? Yes, yes, we have sat down with them. They actually they were very helpful. Um, it was actually the reason we extended that kind of straightaway fire lane just to make sure that they had as much access as we could grant them. Okay, thank yeah. you. Anything else? Yeah. No. Go ahead. Two quick uh, questions. Sure. Uh, how many employees are you going to have here? Do you have any idea? Yeah, probably. Uh, we're, we're planning on eight providers, and each provider has uh, around two and a half uh, support staff. So we're talking between 30, 40 people. Okay, and the last one is, I'm kind of curious about the bus stop. Was, was that your initiative, or? No, that's the, that's the town of Scarborough. Oh, town, okay. But we, uh, I think it's a great idea. We support it full-heartedly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So? Yeah. I tried not to talk about landscaping but here I am um, <laughs> that's fine because of the um, amount of um, minimum amount of setback that's going to be in the <coughs> corner landscaping no surprise is going to be really important and I I know enough about landscaping to know that it can be done in a way that is not going to make the site of the the um, <laughs> help me sure the sight lines Thank at you. the intersection mm -hmm. it's not sure. going to interfere with that but will actually help to buffer the cars that are going to be now facing into route one sure though you mean the ones that are, were existing yeah the, the thing right. is that nothing much really happened there there was there were right. there's some there is some a berm, event, right which if you could keep a berm would be absolutely wonderful right and then some actual low planting on top of that berm would make it absolutely terrific in terms of buffering in a very narrow space absolutely and because you have that open space for coming in I mean it's an opportunity to be really absolutely if you if you look in the I, I know you haven't had time um, but I thought it was very important and I knew it would be important I actually live in Scarborough myself so I'm looking at this with the same community eyes um, but I, I do want to make sure the plants that are, are not the ones that will be absolute but no. we're focusing on a lot of um, narrow canopy in the area so that we're not uh, canoping we don't have canopy over trees but we also have power lines yes, I so I want I would like them to be narrow enough that we can pull them in and I should probably also introduce I'm I myself am a landscape architect so I'm very okay. sensitive Let me to make the a plants. statement about that sure. I think that it's very important to notice that there's a lot that you can do with a minimum amount of space and people who come in front of us do not regularly acknowledge that they say we don't have much space so we're not going to have to do much landscaping I think if you have very little space, you need to do more landscaping, more creatively. And the fact that you're a landscape architect makes me feel really good about this. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Uh, Kylie will attest to my my uh, my uh, passion for landscape as well. I'm pushing to have a hilling garden in <laughs> this section. <laughs> go, go, hilly garden. A hilly garden right here, uh, and. Uh, she, she, in all her other drawings, it says Jake's Park right there, but I want it to be a healing garden, and I'm sticking her to that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm all set. Ron, one more. Go ahead. One more quick question. The community room, where does that come from? Is that a town initiative, or is that... You I think it's a it's a cooperative. Um, so all of the uh, facilities have had a small community room aspect, but it's used um, mainly by the facility. But also uh, the Gorham one is a great example. It's open to the community to use or sign out to use that space. And this model has a bigger component, uh, I believe, because there's a senior program that provides lunch every twice, twice a week. Once to twice a week, and so this was uh, an 
an idea that was uh, brought to, I think that kind of dovetails with what Martin's Point wants to do, and it was brought through economic development and the town, that this might be a great opportunity within the community. Where are we so. doing these lunches now? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I might, Karen Martin is here from SEDCO, who I believe has been integral in the collaboration that was talked about by... By all means. <laughs> um, currently, the lunches are being done out at uh, Camp Ketcha, <clears throat> and this is just a, this community room idea was just a wonderful um, way to work cooperative, cooperatively with Martin's Point and meet a town need that we really have, both in terms of senior... Uh, potential senior center type of activity but also you know we're so tight on meeting space here for all sorts of reasons and Martin's point has been very generous in talking about what a community center could be I shouldn't say community center it's their community rooms but making them really useful for the community to do all sorts of um, uh, types of activities okay. so it's been a, a great great working relationship talking with them about this okay. Uh, let me just jump in on that follow up with John and, and say that uh, uh, it just I sit on a couple of committees other than this we're trying to make some sort of town center now that doesn't meet the criteria I don't mean to go that far but the fact that it's on route one and it's a medical facility and uh, uh, and they're willing to offer this to the community I think it's just one step further and it's on route one and it takes some of the pressure off from a transportation however little that may be uh, on the Black Point Road also. So I think it serves a, a combination without blowing it out of proportion to its, to its uh, you know, reality. Do you have enough from us? I do. If I might ask uh, if about the next submission, we're um, hoping to bring this in for November 20th for the December 7th meeting. And we're hopeful, Mr. Chair, that um, at that meeting we could have the public hearing and hopefully receive, you know, hoping all things are great and you love the project, that we could receive a final approval to take advantage of the winter bidding market. We have our submission <laughs> deadline. If you're, you meet that, we'll certainly, I know the board will. It's up to you. Yep. Yeah, it's on your hands more than, than ours. But, well, but certainly it's possible to get your ballpark now. Yeah. back to us by that November, what would you say, 20th deadline, and we'll, sure. she'll be on the agenda. No, yeah, I'm not so yeah. much worried yeah. about the agenda. I'm more worried. Uh, there was a, a question about the architectural piece, so if there were concerns, uh, I think there was maybe somebody brought up the flat roof. Um, is that a concern from the design guidelines? <laughs> that you could be. Into, you want to get into architecture? Go ahead, Sue. You really would like us to get into architecture? If it's going to impact the next opportunity, then certainly I want any okay. comment that I can take Why don't you back. you put it up for me? This is my problem. Here I am climbing on my soapbox again. This is a problem. This view does not even begin to give me a really accurate representation of the site. It looks a whole lot bigger. Than it really right, is. It's now, a flat I know, drawing. I know, but I'm just saying, as it is drawn there, this place, this this building is huge. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right, but it's much smaller than what was I there. Know. Right. So you see my problem? I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm saying that's one honking big barn. Now, if sure. you want to show us a barn, do something because that's what you do. You get paid the big bucks for figuring out how <laughs> to show me how that is actually going to look proportionally to the space that's going to be available because I really don't like that a whole lot right but it's because it is way out of proportion to what's going on on route one near it so do something about presenting it in such a way that I can see how it integrates into the rest of the community and maybe I won't feel quite so negative about it I'm going to follow up on soup we sure. we have uh, a philosophy I'll call it about HVAC units Mm -hmm. which sure. I don't see when we're talking about the architecture sure. and that and their visibility so that should very much be taken into consideration as far as mm -hmm. where how and how it's going to be some sort of blocked or hidden as right. much as possible so right I can tell you they will be blocked and hidden 
So, right. and from a size and scale, <coughs> short of it's having a, a perspective, I mean, we we will have the elevations. It'll still be a SketchUp model. Um, from a scale perspective, I don't know if I can do much from modeling each side of the street, but perhaps with the landscape surrounding it. Go ahead. Um, I, I think it's kind of unfair to take a look at that. I mean, that's looking at it from a drone, okay? And it, it looks larger than it's probably gonna be. And I think if we had a better representation of what you sure. really planning for the, that, sure. that space, um, I think it would be would be better. I understand you want to try and move this forward, yep. you know, but yep. <coughs> um, right. I think and it's out of proportion the way it looks. Just sure. From the point yeah, of view SketchUp's of that not exactly yeah. the greatest tool at scale, yes. but yeah. um, we do have SMRT. Uh, we'll be doing the architecture, uh, mechanical engineering, and structural engineering, and and we all know they have a great reputation for some pretty beautiful buildings. So um, we will bring back elevations, and I'll see what we can do. Um, to get a perspective that embraces the entire streetscape. Thank you. Let me ask the $64,000 question. When do you expect to begin construction as based as on final approval? As soon as the ground thaws. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry. Uh, we didn't answer the question on the flat roof. Everybody opposed? Anybody <laughs> opposed to this flat roof on the section that's closest to Route 1? If you're looking for quick approval, we need to get some of these out. I, I right. appreciate that, sir. Thank that you. Question. I don't personally have a problem with it. It breaks the building up a little bit. I know we have the design standards, but it breaks it up and adds a little modern look to the building. Yep. So I don't have a personal issue with it, but I guess we need the other board members. Sure. To Go ahead. I don't like flat roofs, period. I'm not sure how this is going to look because the perspective isn't correct, which is part of my problem. I mean, that's why I asked for it, because I can't look at that and see what the real impact of that flat part of the roof is going to be. Sure. I agree with you, by the way. So it, it's, not, out of, it's out of... I'm not saying that I'm for it or against it. I'm just saying no, right now, you. theoretically, I'm not, but that could look fine, depending on what it really looks like to me. Sure. And this is one of those things where you can't take a, you can't take a site walk. You've got to leave it up to the architect to show it in a way that actually shows us what's going on. Sure. Go ahead. Um, I, I hate to keep disagreeing with you. No, go for it. Um, <laughs> I, I, actually, I actually think I like the different shapes myself. I mm -hmm. think it adds a lot of character instead of just having a, you know, the monotonous, you know. I may too. Yeah. So, um, I again, I, I go back to I think once you present us with a more sure. firmed up, you know, presentation on that, it'll look better. But I, I, I would tend to agree with John on that. I think you get the flavor. I mean, I, you know, I think there's general consensus that, that we like mainly what we see. We just need to see a little more upscale. Sure. So, okay. Thank yeah, you. One of the one of the things we're going for is that community space kind of stands out. It's it's really not confused with the healthcare facility itself. That it is a standalone function functioning facility. So, so is that the flat roof? Is that where the community room's going right. to be? Oh, okay. Right. And it's going to be the Karen Martin room? Is that what that's going to be? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Whatever helps. Okay. Thank Good you. one. Thanks. <laughs> Item number five. Frank Marston requests site plan amendment review for 55 Spring Street, assessors map R37, lot 26. Jay, you wanna? Yep. Sort of? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see, board members may recall this <coughs> item. We began reviewing this, I think, back in the late spring or early summer. Um, it's for a parking lot uh, expansion and modifications at 55 Spring Street. Um, the board had principally gone through all the review and were generally comfortable with the proposal but for the applicant need to work uh, through final details of a lease agreement with DOT. Staff's understanding that that has been completed and the land has actually now been transferred <coughs> to the applicant, so they're now the owner. Um, with that, I know uh, based on our last 
discussion, the uh, board had asked for a little more detail on landscaping along Spring Street, which has been provided. And with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I will turn it over to the applicant. <clears throat> uh, hi, Steve Blaze here with Blaze Civil Engineers, now located in Scarborough. Yay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, here with Frank Marston tonight, the owner of the property. Um, we did talk about this a while back. It was in the April meeting when we last spoke about it. So it did take us a little while to get on the same page with the DOT. <coughs> um, but that is um, it's a done deal. So here we are. Um, I, I believe the last outstanding item, last time we spoke, and I can go through the process of it, the what we went over earlier if anyone wants them to refresh our memory but the one thing that was left was the landscaping um, one comment that uh, Susan made was give me a bigger plan I want to see it so here we go you ready <laughs> Ta -da! Oh, that's so there's the bigger landscape plan with <laughs> added plants um, so we did add plants to this um, Sorry about that. This bed here along Spring Street. Um, we also added some plants here. We, I believe these are ornamental grasses here um, to provide a little buffer there. We added, we replaced the day lilies in here with ornamental grasses also. That, um, and that's pretty much all we've changed uh, since we spoke with you last. Does anybody on the board, I mean, we went through this pretty thoroughly other than the I landscaping say, and waiting for the DOT to transfer the land. I think they deserve some sort of credit for not giving up. <laughs> I mean, really. Yeah, I agree with that. Frank definitely does. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? I'll move it forward. Okay. I have um, no problems with this. In that case, I have a draft motion. Uh, move to approve the application of Frank Marston as represented by Blaze Civil Engineers for the reconfiguration expansion of the parking field at 55 Spring Street. The board has considered the proposed site improvements and found the proposal meets the standards of the site plan review ordinance. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you. Keep on. All right. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, Jay has just whispered in my ear, in case anybody has come in late, the Brown Hill Realty LLC request has been tabled. So if anybody is here for that agenda item, it has been tabled. Moving forward. Item number six, the Sparrow Brothers Construction Company request amended subdivision review for a lot line adjustment for the Thurberge subdivision assessors map R40 lot number one. Jay? Sure. As board members will recall, this is a recently approved uh, subdivision amendment, um, which the applicant added seven lots at the end of memory lane. Um, in Conferring with the applicant's engineer, um, it was found that there was a surveying error that needs to be corrected, um, and so it really has a nominal impact on the overall development, has no impact on the overall development, <coughs> a nominal change to the uh, lot line depiction where the land, board members may recall there's some land that was to be conveyed to the main turnpike authority, mm -hmm. um, and so that's really what this uh, amendment is about correcting, and I'm sure the applicant can show us exactly where that square footage is. So with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. And I will turn it over to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nancy St. Clair. I'm with St. Clair Associates. I'm here tonight on behalf of Risbera Brothers. And as you recall, as Jay mentioned, uh, this plan was recently approved, approved last month, uh, for a subdivision off of the end of Memory Lane. If you recall from that discussion, we talked to you folks about a portion of the land actually being conveyed to the main Turnpike Authority. And those coordination efforts are ongoing. The Turnpike Authority uh, is moving forward with the acquisition uh, of that property. But as part of that coordination effort, <coughs> it was discovered that back in 1996, <coughs> 
there was a deed that was conveyed to the Turnpike Authority. The plan that was approved in 2002 referenced that deed and correctly showed the line according to the limits on the extent of the turnpike. However, in that deed there were two parts to that and there was a small sliver that actually runs sort of parallel to, to Rod Road which was in that deed as well. That was not reflected in the 2002 perimeter survey that was done uh, as part of the original mm. subdivision. So when we came in and did the modifications, it was not caught until we had that coordination effort with the Turnpike Authority and they identified that their deed had actually two parts. So what we're talking about is a very small sliver. It's about seven feet wide at its widest point, which is right there, and runs basically parallel along to Rod Road in that little sliver that you see on the bottom of the plan. Hmm. So the majority of the area is, that is, that's impacted by that is actually land that we were conveying to the Turnpike Authority. <laughs> so the land that was to go to the Turnpike Authority got smaller because they already had it, but it does affect a small sliver of Lot 8, which this is Lot 8, this big lot right here. So right on that tip right there, there's about 499 square feet of land area that should not have been in that lot. It was actually acquired by the Turnpike back in 1996. So uh, as part of that, we're here tonight to correct that line, to make it reflect that deed that conveyed back almost 20 years ago, <laughs> and um, uh, correct the lot area for lot 8. It does not affect the bu building window. You can see that that's up here. That lot is well over the minimum lot size, so it doesn't have any effect. We're not changing anything else as far as the design of the project goes, but we wanted to correct that so the record appropriately reflected those deeds. So we're here. Okay, before I open it up to the board, since this is actually something new, uh, there is opportunity for public discussion. So if anybody here to discuss this subdivision, uh, specifically what we've heard tonight. Please come up to the podium, give us your name, and try and keep your remarks down to five minutes or less. Hello, my name is Melissa Chen. I actually live in the Bonnie Grove subdivision that's right next to where Memory Lane is being extended down. Um, my house is <coughs> right there. Um, so I just actually came in. I wasn't sure. I'm not familiar with any of this stuff. I wasn't sure exactly what was going to be changed about it, um, anything like that. I did have a question. I just wasn't sure when the trees, I know that there are pine trees that are going to be put in um, right up along the turnpike when the plans were to move those pine trees over there um, just to help out with the noise and seeing the turnpike. I mean, it is a big adjustment for us as well, um, seeing everything. But that's really all my concern is um, after seeing this, it's nothing, nothing major. But I just had a question bringing that back to everybody in my, my neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Chairman, um, to answer the, um, Melissa's question, I don't have the exact date. Um, what I can do is get her contact information afterwards and have the applicant reach out to her directly with the, the schedule as to that work. Is that okay? Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay. Now I'll open it up to the board. Pretty cut and dry for me. Mm -hmm. Down this end. All set. All set. Having heard all that, I have a draft motion. Good. I move to approve the application of Vespara Brothers Construction Company, Inc., as represented by St. Clair Associates, for the third amended subdivision plan of the, Th the Burge subdivision. The plan amendment corrects the location of a lot lying between the subdivision parcel and the lands to be conveyed to the main Turnpike Authority as described in October 5th, <coughs> 2015 supporting letter and depicted on the plan titled Third Amended Subdivision Plan of the Thurberge uh, Recording Plot dated 9-29-15. Second. Any discussion? All in favor?
The next agenda item, Oops. Verizon Wireless requests site plan review for a transmission tower at 239 Broad Turn Road, Assessor's Map, R24, Lot 6. Jay, you want to use this into this? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as just noted, the applic applicant before you is Verizon Wireless. They are seeking to um, establish a new transmission tower on Broad Turn Road. Uh, the, this is in our transmission tower overlay district zone. Um, and just to remind the board, this application has been before you three previous times throughout the summer. Um, and during those discussions, the board has really been through um, many of the review criteria, principally um, in starting with the priority of location standards um, that you go through in reviewing the transmission towers. And subsequent to that sort of approval, if you will, um, the board has begun review of the performance standards uh, in the trans the TTOD, the trans Transmission Tower Overlay District, as well as the site plan review criteria. Principally, there are really two remaining items, and one of them I uh, frankly think the board has largely dealt with had to do with height. Um, the applicant is proposing 120 feet of height, and I do recall at the last meeting, the board seemed generally comfortable with that height. Just as a reminder, the standard is 130 feet, but the board does have the ability to allow for a reduction or an increase, depending on the board's determination. It does, as I mentioned, it did appear that the board was comfortable with the 120 foot height. Um, the last item that really seemed to remain uh, open for discussion was around buffering. I know we had, there was some confusion around that issue last time, as staff has reached out to a town attorney to help provide some guidance in terms of the board's review. Um, essentially, and as we often talk about, the board's job at, at this uh, time is to review the proposal that the applicant has provided, the evidence that they provided in terms of buffering, and if you find that adequate, then it would appear this item is ready for approval, and we've drafted a motion to that effect. If there's additional work that the board thinks needs to be done to meet that standard, then that would be on the applicant to figure out to meet that standard. Um, and so I, I really think that's what, at this point, what it boils down to, and of course, board members may have other items they wish to bring up, but based on the three prior discussions, that seemed to be where we were at at this point. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, and I'll turn it over to the applicant. Yes, thanks everyone. Um, I think on the on the last buffering piece, I, what we had submitted- Can in you most, name please? Oh yes, sorry, uh, Scott Anderson and Chip Fredette here this evening for Verizon Wireless. Um, as a follow-up to the last uh, planning board meeting and kind of along the lines of the buffering, we had submitted an additional plan that noted a line of evergreens that would be planted um, outside of the fenced area of the impoundment and also a notation on the plan that there would not be any clearing of any existing vegetation outside of the fenced area where the tower and the other improvements will be located without prior approval of the planning board as a way to um, address and uh, do the best we could at, at providing some buffering uh, uh, towards the base of the tower. Um, as you know, the, the, the board had gone through a, a, a pretty thorough uh, uh, consideration of the monopole versus mono pine design and how that would affect the visual impacts. Um, we've, uh, the most recent plan we provided showed the, the mono pine design, which we understand has been elected by the board. Um, and we think here that the there's kind of three components of, of visual mitigation that are part of this project. One, uh, we've proposed 120 instead of 130 feet because 120 works for our coverage needs and by reducing the size of the tower, that is the first piece that minimizes visual impacts. Second, the monopine design, as you saw in the photo simulations that compared both the, the pole versus the monopine, especially at this lower height, um, does provide, we think, some significant visual buffering, um, and um, uh, which is beneficial and minimizes the visual impacts. And then the third piece of it is the notations that we've got on the plan and the addition of some uh, additional plantings on the north hand side of the fenced area to do what we can more towards the base of the tower to make sure that no matter what happens elsewhere on the site, there will be within this 100 by 100 foot leased area um, maintained vegetation and some additional vegetation placed um, along the fence line. So our hope is that with those kind of three components, we will have 
uh, both met the coverage objectives, kept the tower as low as possible, done the best job of kind of hiding it, um, and minimize um, other visual impacts to the greatest extent that we can. And we're here to answer questions or um, uh, hear your comments as to kind of where things stand and, and how you're feeling about the project. So, fire away. Hey, before I turn it over to the board, uh, for the record, we received uh, another letter from a resident uh, a Mr. Emerald, who lives at 11 Carterbrook Drive in Scarborough. Uh, he just reiterated his concerns about the project. I'm not going to read the whole letter because we've already discussed that in the past, but I do want for the record to, to note that he has once again expressed his concerns. Uh, having said that, I'll now open it to the board. And John, since you've been most interested in this, I'll start with you. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, at this point, I'm okay. I had a question on buffering. I had some questions, technical questions, that uh, the town attorney and staff has satisfied my questions. Uh, I'm okay. Prior to that little doubt in my mind, I was ready to approve this project, but I just, the light came on and I wanted to dance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nick? I'm all set. Um, Raj? I, I Just one question on sure. the, um, the model plan. Mm -hmm. I noticed that that's 40 feet before you actually see some of those fake branches. Thank you. Okay. Um, just a condition. The plantings that you're going to do, are those going to be somewhat close to that 40? Or what are you going to put in there? Well, the existing vegetation is a little higher. The initial plantings we would do would probably be six to eight foot high. Over several years, they will grow. But there is some existing vegetation at the site that you can see in one of the photo simulations that provides um, some shielding at the very base of the tower. And as we've noted on the plan, there's no cutting of any of the vegetation in that area um, as part of the project. So, uh, Is it going to be basically pine? It's a combination. It's largely pine trees, but there is some deciduous trees in that okay. immediate vicinity. I, I, I don't have any other problems with anything. Okay. So I don't have a problem with that. I was just wondering. <laughs> Thanks. Susan? I'm all set. Okay. Um, I just have one question. Um, you were working <laughs> with the DEP. Yes. Uh, on whether it's a permit by rule. Have you gotten any answer to that? We, we did. We were required to file a permit by rule, which we filed, and we've received the response from uh, the, the DP. So that permit is already in hand. Um, but your question suggests to me that we have not yet provided that to Jay, or he would have reported that. So um, we will get that to you immediately. <laughs> well done. Um, <laughs> but that is in hand, so we've worked that out with the DP. So you can't pull anything over. <laughs> <That's exactly right. laughs> okay. <laughs> Having said that, uh, I have a draft motion. I move to approve the application of Verizon Wireless under Chapter 405 of the Town of Scarborough Zoning Ordinance in Chapter 405B, the Town of Scarborough Site Plan Review Ordinance with the following findings and conditions. I'm not going to read all the findings, but I want the findings read into the record. Uh, conditions. Prior to the issuance of the building permit, the applicant shall pay the peer review fees. That's number one. Number two, prior to the issuance of the building permit, a finalized surety shall be provided to the Planning Board to guarantee the removal of the tower should it become abandoned. This planning, what I say? Oh, I'm sorry, planning department. Thank you, Karen. To guarantee the removal of the tower should it be abandoned. This documentation must comply with the provisions of section 9F21 of the zoning ordinance. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? You got to go. Great, thank you Thanks very, very much. much. And uh, we appreciate that this was uh, maybe the first new tower to come through, or one of the first through, and we really appreciate the time and attention of the town and, and, and working on your ordinance. And uh, so Did it's been our being, honor to participate. Being put through all no, no, we, we, we relish those opportunities. So thanks again for all your time and hard work. We That's appreciate we it. Hear. So you're getting paid by the hour. Time. <laughs> yes, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Shut his microphone off now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Send him home. Um, as noted, 
Item number eight has been tabled. So that's all of the formal items that we have. I've broken my record again. Uh, so item number nine, is there a town planner's report? Uh, we don't have anything new to report on this meeting. Okay. No. What about an item 10, an administrative amendment report? We did not have any administrative amendments oh since God, the last meeting. get out of here before 8 o'clock. <laughs> Number 11, uh, correspondence. I will say that, again, to mention, uh, for the record, uh, the letter that we received from Mr. Amaro. Any other correspondence? Planning board comments. I just have one. I appreciate the short meetings, and unfortunately, if you're going to be the chair next year, I won't be here to enjoy these short meetings. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy. Um, I do have one. That we do have a uh, transportation meeting tomorrow night, and uh, we will. I unfortunately missed the last meeting, but I know that on the agenda we're going to be also starting to talk about the Gorham Road, uh -huh. uh, which is a mess, uh, and uh, it. So there's a lot of work, and there's going to be a lot of time put into it. Um, other than that, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you.